Whoa, there's more. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so guess what? The first thing we're going to do is uh, uh, take a selfie. Because <laughs> we have not ever done this the time I've been here. So, by all means, this is definitely going on social media. <laughs> so, let's see. Let me get the... Where am I at? Oh, I'm going to turn it around. <laughs> intentionally purpose to say, you know what, Dad, come it, I'm going to praise the Lord anyway, Amen. in spite of what's coming my way. And so I, I hope that's what we do today. Okay, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, receive our offering now. Yeah. Um, just get that over with and, and go from there. And uh, you guys are crammed in there like sardines. So if you need to stand up to get your wallet out or checkbook out or reach over to get your purse, by all means, uh, take your time. Um, we'll wait on you. We'll, he'll wait. <laughs> Definitely will wait. So, uh, you know, we, we, we do receive an offering, and we don't apologize for receiving an offering because this is what the Lord commands us to do, is to trust Him with our, with our funds, with our finances, and He asks for a 10%. And it's not because He's greedy. It's because He wants you to believe that He can take the other 90% and use it to meet all of your needs. Right. And with that 10%, be able to fund the ministry and the mission that goes out. Uh, so I hope that you will uh, use this. By the way, this is the first Fruits uh, Sunday. Uh, by the way, just so you know, um, that said, back in uh, November, we, uh, we began a uh, campaign. It was a short-term finance campaign. We were going to see about getting our note, uh, our mortgage on this property, paid down low enough so that whenever we refinanced, um, that it would be under $400,000. Just so you know, we began five years ago with a $473,000 note, okay? And so to get it under $400,000 is going to take a little bit of an effort. We did it. By the grace of God and because of the faithfulness of His people, whenever we uh, work through the refinance process, we will refinance under $400,000. And that's to the glory of God. That's, that's, that's just God being good and showing off to His people. So thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Um, uh, that's, just, that's just the importance of it. Okay? So let, let's pray. Hey! Hey, Money. How are you? How can the lights on turn on? <laughs> the electricity's out. That's why we're out here. Out. Yep. So, hey, we're gonna pray and take an offering, okay? okay. All right. You, know, you, you you cool with that? Yeah. All right. Let's pray. All right. Father God, you are faithful, and today, Lord, we just praise you because uh, you have shown us time and time and time again about how you are faithful. So, Lord, I pray, God, would you uh, would you use this time, dear God, as an attitude of worship? May we glorify your name. May we praise you and honor you. And Lord, may this be to the sake of your kingdom. And Lord, because of this receiving of offering, Lord, may it fund the mission of this church, dear God, not just this local church, but the church international, that we would see hearts and souls one for Christ. And we praise you and we say all this in the name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. So while the offering plates are passing by, and you're digging deep, I'm kidding. Uh, I want to... I want to um, I want to just point out a couple of things. If you have your bulletin, you'll notice inside um, uh, it was supposed to be a VBS celebration, and we have this really nice, cool stage set up and display that you're not going to get to see because the electricity's out. I mean, I've got a flashlight. I'll go get it, and you can shine it on there, and you can look at it. Yeah. When does this go back on? I don't know. I hope it comes on pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I'm, I'm going to preach right now, okay? Okay. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. 
so that said, what we're going to do is, is instead of trying to honor our BBS service and everything that they learned, we're going to put it off a week because we want to do it right and do it well. Okay, so so next week, all you kids that are here because of BBS today, you thought we were going to do it today. I'm sorry, I didn't do it on purpose. Okay, so we will we will we'll do it next week, and I promise you, I'll tell you what, we'll make it worth your while if you'll come back next week. All right, you cool with that? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so next week Sunday school, you'll meet and you'll you'll go over everything. You'll go over the verses. You'll go over the songs. You'll go over everything, and that way it kind of refreshes your mind and memory and everything. Okay, is that cool? Good. All right. Good. All right. Um, okay. You got uh, you got announcements inside your bulletin. If you if you want to stop fanning yourself long enough to to just take a quick look, you'll see what's going on. Uh, Wednesday afternoons, 4.30, we're doing a, a casual conversation through Romans, and I'm finding out that it's not a casual conversation. It's absolute confrontation with me. Uh, uh, not you with me, but God with me speaking through Romans. is really pretty powerful stuff. So if you're not able to make the 4.30, then just say so. Hey, I'd like to come, but I can't make 4.30. Is there another time we can do it? We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make another time slot for that. I didn't ask. Uh, so anyway, you'll see other things that are going to August 12th. August 19th, uh, missionary books are going to be here on uh, August 13th. Yeah, so cool stuff. Um, I want to, I want to real quickly before we jump, we're gonna. I, I'm, I'm not gonna be long-winded because what I had planned to say to you today, I'm actually gonna put it off a week as well. So that way, um, it has the full effect. But today, I, I just got just real brief thing, and then we'll we'll move forward. But. Um, I want to say a quick thank you to all of our teachers, uh, all of our, our leaders, all of our, our, like our, our, our people who were over games and crafts, people in the kitchen, uh, everybody who had a chance to put their loving hands on our kids. And you did so very well. Thank you. You guys did an outstanding job. This past week, which is normally, I, if you ever hear the words VBS, it's chaos. <laughs> it's confusion. It's utter. <clears throat> and in the midst of all that, it was amazing and it was fun and our kids had a great time and the cohesiveness of everything was just like a champ, just like this. And so it was a great week. And I, I thank you for everybody that helped out. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <sighs> well, if you have your Bible, uh, whether it be in paper form or electronically, I think I want to share with you from, uh, I think it's 1 Kings. I'm sorry, 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm not going to be very long, uh, I promise. It's, it's going to be kind of early. Um, because I'd love for you to be able to stay cool, and the wind is blowing, and I'm grateful for that, but I just need you not be miserable, okay? So, um... So 1 Kings chapter 17, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, it's kind of a, kind of, uh, actually I take it back, it's 18, I'll get it right, 1 First, First Kings chapter 18, let's see if I can find this spot, um, okay, so if, if you're looking at chapter 18, here's, here's the long story of what, what the story starts out with, um, there's a man named Elijah who is a prophet. He's a man of God. And uh, Israel is uh, is kind of just in upheaval. It's kind of eating itself alive. And in so doing, there's a King Ahab, who's not a very nice guy, who uh, is now allowing other, pro other gods besides the true God to be worshipped. And he himself is involved in that. And his wife is a huge fan of the god Baal. And... Uh, and what you'll find if you look down through this chapter is that Elijah is invited to a confrontation and Elijah then turns the confrontation into a contest. And uh, so let me see if I can find where we want to start reading and then we'll, we'll jump in um, and go from there. Uh, start verse 16. Um, so Obadiah went to tell Ahab that Elijah had come, and Ahab went out to meet Elijah. When Ahab saw him, he exclaimed, So is it really you, you troublemaker of Israel? 
I have made no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers. For you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. Now, and here's the, here's, the, here's the gauntlet that he throws down. He says, Now summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel, along with the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who are supposed, supported by Jezebel. So Ahab summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets of, to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, How much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls. Here's the contest. Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without setting fire to it. I will prepare the tar. I'm sorry. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood of the altar, but not set fire to it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. God who answers by setting fire to the wood is the true God. And all the people agreed. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, You go first, for there are many of you. Choose one of the bulls and prepare it, and call the name of the Lord your God. But do not set fire to the wood. So what you find beginning verse 26, going on down, uh, you find that the prophets of Baal, they do just that. They begin to pray to Baal, and pray to Baal, and pray to Baal, and they're, they're loud, and they're wailing, and they're just getting after it, you know, and just praying crazy loud. But, of course, Baal is a fake, fake god. Yeah. Good, yeah. thank you. Um, and in being a fake god, what happens is, is that nothing happens, right? It's like, almighty music stand, would you please accept the, right? It has that effect. There's nothing to it. And so what happens is, is that Elijah begins to pick on him, and he eggs him on Maybe you're not praying loud enough. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's on vacation. And so then the prophets of Baal begin to cut themselves to show to Baal, the stick god, hey, we mean business. And of course, the Baal god isn't paying attention because he what? Fake? Yeah. And so what happens is that Elijah says, okay, fine, it's my turn. And then he goes and he rebuilds the altar. And he puts... Uh, puts the bull on top of the altar and he cuts it up, puts the bull on top of the altar and then he says and then he digs a moat around the bull a ditch okay, and it's not a, a skinny ditch, it's a pretty deep ditch and, and then he says bring me water and they begin to bring him water, which by the way this is during a famine, so there's no water, and yet, so they're bringing him priceless, precious water. And, and he's taking this water, and he pours it over the top of his bull. And it runs down into the altar, and onto the ground. He says, bring me more water. And they bring him another big thing over. He pours it over the bull, and it runs down into the altar, fills up the moat. There's that much water. Pulls over the bull, over the altar. The ground is now muddy, and the oat is, the oat, the moat is full. And it was in that time when he began to pray. And I want to share with you what he prays. Verse 36. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Have you ever been in a situation or scenario where it feels like your very best efforts are being swamped with water? It's like nothing seems to go right. It's like, here I am, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this, I'm supposed to do this, but... Everything is flooded. I can't, it, it, nothing's working my way. And this morning, not going to lie, I was kind of feeling like, um, like the people watching Elijah. Not necessarily Elijah. Elijah knew what he was doing. But I'm like doing, what are you doing? We get here, I get here to the church this morning and, you know, our power situation is what it is. Um, 
I find out that one or two of you have uh, situations going on at home, whether it be um, Hayden's got a kidney stone, trying to pass a kidney stone. It passed. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, he, he couldn't be here. It's going to be kind of a big deal. It's vacation Bible school day. We wanted to have a great day so that our people could really dote on our kids and show off for you. And I had lots of great things to do. And it was going to be a great day. And no power, man. And it kind of bums me out. My wife calls me and says that she cut her finger and she had to go get stitches. And so I'm like going, man, when does it end? And I really felt like as I was looking on to the day, here's my sacrifice being flooded with water. Here's, here's my story, and it's just being totally cut. God can't show up in this. And it's a very common thing for us, I think, sometimes. Whenever, whenever we face a story of confrontation, and uh, maybe we're putting out the very best efforts we can put out. Maybe we can, we, we're, we're, we're trying to make things work, you know. Um, I want to make this go forward, you know. I'm putting out the effort. I'm doing everything. I love this one. I've done everything right, but I'm not getting the results I, I expected to get. Why is the deal? Why is that? And there's a part of this that it's not necessarily what Elijah prayed, but it's really how he prayed it that I think strikes me. And, and, and I think what I see him saying is, in the midst of this, would you prove that you are God? In the midst of this, would you come shine down into my storm? Would you do this so that all of these other people will see that you really are God? In the midst of my story, in the midst of my junk, would you show everybody else around me that you are still Almighty God? And I think sometimes that's probably how we should pray. Whenever we're faced with junk, whenever our best efforts are being totally just blown apart, I think it's at that point, maybe what we can say is, okay, God, what are you doing? Okay, God, what do you have in mind? You might do something amazing in this you might really come through in a way that we never expected to happen. And I think sometimes it's a change of mindset of how we pray in that regard. Listen to what, listen to what happens next, beginning in verse 38. Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It wasn't just the bowl, it was everything. It burnt up everything. It even licked up all the water in the trench. So everything that everything that was totally flooding out Elijah's story was done away with. Because Elijah prayed, God, you have your way. You have your way in this. Sometimes it's not God removed me from my situation that we should pray. But Walk with me through my situation. You said you would carry me. You said even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can fear no evil. And so maybe it's that. Maybe it's a change of mindset and how we pray. Not, not God, remove me from my story. Don't, I, I'm flooded here, God. You've got to do away with all the water. Maybe it's, God, this is my story, and you promised to walk with me through it. So I'm going to walk with you and I'm just going to seek you out and I want to see you show up in all of the story so that you would be glorified and everybody around me would see. That's, that's the power of testimony. That's the power of testimony. It's the coolest thing whenever I get to hear somebody say, yeah, this is how God showed up. God was faithful. Um, in the middle of my headache, in the middle of my heartache, in the middle of my turmoil, you know, God showed up. I think that's important for us. I know you guys are sitting out here thinking, it's hot. It's humid. But what if we were to pray, God, would you show up? God, would you show up? Would you? We know that God is always present because of, He says He is, but the truth is that sometimes it's this physical 
I'm going to come and I'm going to get into your business. This, this, would you come get into my business? Would you come get into my business? That type of prayer. God, you know my story. You know what I'm dealing with. You know all my stuff. So would you come sit with me in my stuff? And would you see where this party goes? So how about we do this? We don't have an altar. And we don't have really anything other than a bunch of crowded seats, a bunch of hot people. Um, but how about we just pray right now? We'll, and we'll, we're literally going to close with this, okay? How about we just simply pray this? God, you know where I'm at. <laughs> You know what's going on in my story. You know my... You know what's flooding me over. You know what is absolutely bowling me over. It might be finances. It might be relationships. It might be health situations. It might be job. It might be just stress and anxiety. Who knows what it is. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that sometimes we spend more time praying, God, take me out of my junk instead of God... Walk with me through my child. So let's let's just pray for some. Father God in heaven, every one of us in this place, we came into this uh, into this property uh, for the purpose of joining together as the community of Christ a body of believers. And Lord, we come with different stories, with different situations and scenarios. Lord, in all of this, Lord, we have oftentimes prayed, God, remove me from my junk. Take away my headaches. Take away my heartaches. Take away my, my hurts and my sorrows. and my, Take away all my stuff that hurts me. And Lord, I pray today, would you give to us a change of mindset in how we pray? Lord, instead of seeking a perfect world scenario, God, I pray that we would seek a perfect relationship scenario. That is where we trust that you will go with us wherever we may go. And that whenever our story is flooded, whenever our situation is hectic and heavy, we can say, God, would you show up in this? God, would you show up in my relationship that needs serious resurrection? God, would you show up in my finances? May I trust you with all of that. Lord, would you show up in my health? In the middle of all of it, dear God, not just remove my bad stuff from me, but would you walk with me through this part of the journey? God, would you walk with me through this so that your evidence would be displayed to people all around us? Father, because all around us are people who need to know the hope of Christ. And, and Lord, in, in my stuff, in my junk, in my story, Lord, I pray would you be glorified so that people around me will see you. And Lord, what I know is that whenever I trust you, just like Elijah, when I trust you with my stuff, instead of asking you to remove my headaches and heartaches, I just say, show up with my heartaches and my headaches. What happens is, is that you make my headaches go away, just like the water went away out of the moat going around Elijah's altar. And suddenly they don't hurt like they did before. So, Father God, I pray. Um, may we change how we pray. Not just to remove us from our, uh, our, our bad situation or to remove the, the heartache from us, but may we begin to pray more fervently, Father, would you walk with me on good days and on bad days? And in so doing, would you be glorified so that everybody around me sees you? For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.